Hey, and welcome to Internet Roundup. I'm Chuck, and that's Josh, and uh, I just burped. You. So that means it's time to start the show. Yep. We round up the internet two at a time. During the daytime, we do Stuff You Should Know, the podcast, mm-hmm. which is far better than this. It's about 3, 3.30 in the morning right now. Yeah. We're not allowed to leave. We're not until we shoot 37 of these. And this is number 36. Oh, is it? We've made it through that many already? Yep. You, you all right? How's your Delta flight going? 15B? Order another drink, 15B. Watch this. going to be like a 10-year-old. <laughs> they said. Well, I'll have another soda. <laughs> <laughs> Very cute. All right. Uh, these two things we're going to cover could not be more different. <laughs> yeah. One is uh, some mind-bending science. And the other is uh, not that. Body bending video. (laughs) Hey, nice. Thank you. Uh, So this first one, uh, the name of the the article is Record Setting Hard Drive Writes Information One Atom at a Time. From Gizmodo, right? Gizmodo, great site. And uh, this is pretty amazing. In the Netherlands at Delft University, uh, a developer named Sander Ott has invented, I guess invented. Yeah or is working on perfecting an atomic scale data storage device, basically a hard drive that can pack 500 terabits onto something the size of a postage stamp. Right. That's enough to hold every book ever written by humans. On a postage stamp. On a postage stamp. Yeah. Um, and he did it using, well, he and his team did it using chlorine atoms and copper. Yeah. See, now I'm already lost. Because apparently <laughs> if you take, well, if you take chlorine <laughs> atoms and you put them on a copper plate. Uh-huh. And you keep them at just some ridiculously low negative um, three forty six temperature I believe. in liquid nitrogen yeah. or no liquid nitrogen temperatures. I'm sorry, ne- negative three forty six Fahrenheit. Yep, that's negative two hundred and ten degrees Celsius, right? So if you if you take chlorine atoms and put them on a copper plate at that temperature, they apparently form a grid yeah. and hold their position like a perfect square. Right. So if you created something like a binary code depending on whether there was a chlorine atom in a place on the grid uh-huh. or there was one missing in a place on the grid, why you could use that to transcribe things like letters and words mm-hmm. and ultimately information. Yeah. And that's exactly what they did. But they did it on such a nano scale that apparently this is, um, as Gizmodo puts it, by far the largest nano um, data encryption or yeah. data storage project ever created. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Because they did 64 bits, right? So, which would be eight by eight. Right. Which is, that's a lot. That is. And, um, there, uh, like we said, the temperature is one of the big caveats as yeah. far as this being, you know, the new thing of the future. Right. Um, negative three forty six for it to operate, and in a clean vacuum environment. Yeah, yeah, it's, but it's not going to be your average kitchen. The guy says, "Look at MRIs, though. You go into an MRI machine, you're True. basically surrounded by an electromagnet that's kept at helium temperatures, which yeah. is super cold. That's a good point." That's that's geek jargon for really cold. Yeah. And there hasn't been any issues with that. True. So he's like, who knows? But he points out also in the end, he's like, this is about a lot more than data storage. It's sh- we're showing like we can do stuff on the nano scale that right. just a year or two ago, everybody's like, that's in the far future. Right. No, the future's now. Yeah. And uh, the one of the other problems right now is it's it's writing the information very slowly. Um, but they said that they anticipate that the speed could increase. Right. And well, you know, this is probably the wave of the future at one point. Atomic data storage. Right. It's amazing. And atomic, not in like the the campy 50s way, like literally using atoms to store data. Right. Because I'm sure there's already a hard drive out there called the atomic storage device. Yeah. You know? You can get it for three (laughs) easy payments of $29.95. Are you good with that one? Do you feel like you satisfied the science? I surprised myself. Good. All right, this next one Josh dug up, and it is from a website, one of your favorite websites, Atlas Obscura, mm-hmm. and it's called Workplace Safety Videos Got Pretty Horrific in the 90s, Yeah, and hopefully what's happening right now is we're just watching this. It's just playing behind us. Yeah, we would put a disclaimer up, but it's just so obviously uh, not real. Oh, that's not real? No. <laughs> 
I thought it was obvious. Yeah, it looks like uh, some of these, you remember Super Dave Osborne on the Dave Letterman uh, show? Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Like where, yeah. you know, I can't remember the guy's real name, he was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I think it was Dave Osborne. No, that was just the character. <laughs> okay. But uh, he would like, you know, fling himself off a building, he uh-huh. was a stunt man, and then it would cut to the obvious like, <laughs> Dummy filled with straw. It's not even a good dummy. Yeah, it is just like that. That's what those look like. Super Dave. Yeah. But, I mean, it is a real workplace video from 1998 called Will You Be Here Tomorrow? Um, 1998? It looks like 1978. It does. And I looked up box office receipts. This actually (laughs) did better than um, Species 2 and the remake of Psycho that year. That's pretty funny. Appropriately. Did you know the Big Lebowski ranked 96 out of 100 as far as box office receipts? The Big Lebowski was followed by Rushmore. So the two best movies made in 1998, like, grossed the least. Wow. What were you laughing at? Oh, you're watching the video? Yeah. I love this video. So which which one's your favorite? Well, I think there's a couple of my favorites. One is the man who is so angry at a coworker <laughs> that he seemingly deliberately shoves his hand <laughs> into a machine that cuts his fingers off because right. he's just mad. Yeah. And then, um, well, in any of the ones where the the straw dummy is impaled right. and ketchup squirts out of the body, yeah, that's it's pretty good. good. My favorite is, I think the guy's like hammering a pressurized gas tank. Yeah, it's like a canister. And it comes shooting <laughs> off. It's just like a comedy of errors. It goes all over the factory. People are ducking, except for one poor schmo who's in his office, and he gets like smacked in the face, yeah. and then the place erupts into flames. Yeah. I Hopefully this is playing right now. Yeah, the nail in the eyeball is pretty good, too. Oh, that was good, that too, because of the guy's reaction. He's like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't touch it. It's amazing. <laughs> so uh, I suggest looking this up on the YouTube because the the music is really amazing. It goes hand in hand. Like watching it silently like this and hearing us yammer is, you know. Yeah, the music's good too. You're not getting the full effect. So uh, you got anything else on that? Yeah, Rushmore made $43,666 <laughs> in its opening weekend. Wow. But it was only on two screens. One in New York and one in LA probably. I am sure. Yeah. All right, well, that's the Internet Roundup slash Box Office Mojo update. All right. And uh, we will see you next time right here in the studio.